Welcome to a whole new series on the channel featuring tons of product, tons of Yugi tubers with an £80 budget every month, and a tournament against these Yugi tubers. Welcome to the Sealed Only League. Hello guys, Robert one here, and welcome to the Sealed Only League, a series on the channel where pretty much I'm competing against tons of other Yugi tubers with an £80 budget and opening product throughout the month to improve my chances of winning at the tournament at the end of the month. Now, in today's episode of the Sealed Only League, I'm going to be opening some dual overload for you guys today for a couple of reasons. And seeing as the last couple of episodes have had a few different things or have just been very normal, I felt like doing something different and actually going over the dual overload set with you guys today, going through it and talking about why I chose to buy this set. Now, just to remind you guys, this set was actually not a set that I could originally buy and was only able to unlock thanks to you guys liking the video and subscribing to the channel so if you want to see me opening other kind of sets such as this such as dual overloads so like maximum gold mega tins and anything along those lines please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel so i can get more unlocks so i can open different content to improve our sealed only deck so guys without further ado let's actually go over to the Yu-Gi-Oh database where we're going to go through the dual overload set and talk about the cards that i really want to pull from this set to improve a few of our strategies for the sealed only league all right guys so here we are on the Yu-Gi-Oh database and we're going to be going through the dual overload set and talking about the reason why we chose to by the dual overload packs now this set is known to be a very amazing set for a lot of reasons one it has a lot of link monsters that are just really powerful and really good to play and two because it has a lot of really good reprints that can be used in a variety of decks and because of that I wanted to get this set. I thought this would be a great first unlock for a couple of reasons. One, it would give us more extra cards for pretty much all of our strategies, the Machina, the Counter Fairy, and the Drytron. And two, because it's got a lot of staples that I can put into pretty much every one of those decks. Now, we're gonna be going down the list here of cards that is in this set, and I'm gonna be basically telling you guys what I wanna pull and the reasons why. So let's go ahead and start this now so we can start looking through the set and talking about why I wanted to buy this set. So, starting off right off the bat first card Crystron Halki Fibrax now we obviously want to pull one Crystron Halki Fibrax this card is absolutely insane giving us access into not only link three plays but if we pull other cards potential link four plays single handedly and that being the case makes this card really really insane and we can use it very easily thanks to us buying the Machina structure deck that contained Despot 003 and Despot 001 along with righty and lefty driver making a needle fiber to Toolbox deck actually possible in our decks. Seriously, Crystal Huggy Fibrax would be an absolutely insane pull because it would make it easier for us to summon cards like our Nightmare Unicorn, our Nightmare Griffin. It would make us be able to potentially put Synchros in our deck at some point if we pull some Synchros. The card is absolutely insane and really does bolster a lot of different things that we can use in our deck and it would really give us a boost. Another card that I would like to pull just for one of the strategies that we have is Celestial Knight Parsha. Now, the the reason why I wanted to pull this card and the reason why this card is actually good for us to have for this set is because, well, we play Counter Fairy, and in Counter Fairy, there's a Counter Trap that I actually did not play because the card takes a lot of restrictions, and we can't really utilize one of its key factors because I don't want to play the big Counter Fairy boss monster known as Parshaft in the main deck. But the thing with the Counter Trap is the Counter Trap actually allows us to special summon Parshaft monsters from the extra deck as well. Now we don't have any extra deck Parshaft monsters yet, and pulling Celestial Night Lord Parshaft would give us that ability to just have an extra deck Parshaft monster and be able to utilize that counter trap as well giving us not only a free summon from the extra deck which would be really nice in general but also just make the trap card even more powerful and maybe give me a reason to actually play it so celestial knight parshaft is another card that i would really really like to pull continuing on down the list we have union carrier union carrier is a really insane monster that i'd like to pull as well for a couple of reasons first being it's good in two of our strategies it's really good in our drytron strategy for the fact that we can go ahead and equip a drytron from the deck use the ritual spell to go Go ahead and ritual it away and then go ahead and summon out our herald of ultimateness for when we get the ritual spell but 
also because in Machina, we can go ahead and do the same thing by targeting itself, equipping Machina Fortress to it, or Machina Mechanized Melee, the big Machina boss monster, to the Union Carrier, and basically just getting free resources and free advantage just by using this card and a free 2k beat stick if we have a weaker monster there as well. So, just a really good card that can get our Machina monsters out of the deck, gets us to our big boss monster, Machina Mechanized Fortress, or whatever the name of the card is, my mate brain has kind of forgot a bit, but it will be on screen, but it's just a really good card to pull and will make our deck a little more consistent there as well. Another card is Herald of Mirage Lights. This card is really good for the Dry Tron strategy that we're aiming for, being that we want to enter a hand trap format with the Dry Tron strategy, and Herald of Mirage Lights allows us to discard more of our fairy monsters in hand to negate spell and trap cards, allowing us to trigger more effects and allowing us to get to more fairy monsters if we discard an, a an AI or whatever the card, the Eva, from the hand, and then we get to go ahead and go from there. So we get to go get a lot of advantages there and would be a really nice card to pull for our Dry Tron strategy there as well. Uh, some more Bird of Sovereignty, something good if we ever go down a Winged Beast route so we, and we get a Thunderbird, so that's something really nice that we could pull as well. Selene, Queen of Master of Magicians. Now, this would be really good to pull for the fact that if we get Needle Fiber, all we really need to get is one Effect Vela to be able to utilize a combo with Needle Fiber and Selene to go instantly into a Link 4. So if we did manage to pull Selene, Queen of Masters and Magicians, it would be really, really cool to pull this card just because it would give us that additional edge to go into a Link 4 a lot easier. Now, continuing on, there are also cards like Mecha Phantom Beast, Aurorodon, which would be really nice with a Needle Fiber package as well. Summoning with the Despot, Summoning 001, and Summoning Multiple 001s to go into potential Synchro plays. Uh, continuing on here as well, we also have Artifact Dagda. If we ever get Artifact Scythe and a way to pop Artifact Scythe, that would be really insane to pull too. Predator Plant, Verti, Anaconda, another really strong card for if we ever get stuff like Red Eyes Fusion, Red Eyes by Dragon, and Dark Magician, along with Dragoons. Because if we can ever make that in this format, it would be absolutely insane and win us so many games uh continuing on that's pretty much all the link monsters that i would really want to pull in this set because to be honest those are the link monsters that will help us most with our free strategies like you could you could argue bujinte Ash Ar ashirama um the new bujinte link here could potentially get us there as well but it's not really something that we'd want in our machine deck anyway but continuing on look going down the list we also have cards like the ferocious flame swordsman which is just a generic link too that boosts all warriors by 500 attack which could be really nice and also could summon monsters from the graveyard targeting a warrior non-link but we've also got some fusion monsters here that we're not really looking for honestly like there are a lot of filler cards that we don't don't want to pull but there are also a lot of good cards that we would like to pull relinquish anima another really good card that i would love to pull out of this set for the fact that if we do pull it if relinquish anima would just give us the ability to summon it in drytron and then just say oh uh you put that monster in that zone i'm gonna steal it which is just really really good there as well continuing there we can get stuff like tool guide which could come in later on chaos dragon levianair if we ever do play drytron and then we got tons of drytrons in the graveyard summon it out summon another monster for graveyard absolutely perfect there as well really useful vanity's rule a very good card for us to pull in our Drytron strategy just because if we pull it we can just go ahead and search it and cut the Christia from our deck entirely and cutting the Christia from our deck entirely means that our life is a lot easier so we can go ahead and special summon our monsters but our opponent cannot special summon theirs if you get what I mean cards like Swap Frog are just really nice as well Zephra Blackwing Zephros could be a really good card that we could play later on too just having that ability we got loads of other good reprints Phantasme really good we reveal it from our hand special summon it go ahead and draw two cards and put two back Suraveus, a really good hand trap that could stop our opponent from targeting our monsters another really good card there and we can use in drytron as well because we can just go ahead and summon it and negate an inherent summon that our opponent has and then just go ahead and use it as a hand trap as well last warrior something goat format related but we're not going to use it cypher null omega really good synchro monster that we could play and really good there too dagusta emerald just a really nice rank four that we could pull ding Gearsu, if we ever get to the point where we can use it really good two level eight monsters to just go ahead and send a card to graveyard and have protection on the board really strong al mirage another really good monster that we could potentially pull because it's just a generic link one that we can summon out from just having a monster with a thousand less attack mst another good card right there terraforming i think we already have terraformings but it could be useful there if we don't continuing on we also can get silent mining if we ever go into those kind of areas with the cyber monsters and into the trap cards the stuff that i really really did buy the set for compulsory activation device paleozoic dynamiscus and infinite impermanence all really really good trap cards that we could potentially put in our decks Com compulse being a card that would literally just say oh you're playing shadows well you summoned your construct it's going straight back to the extra deck i don't care dynamiscus oh you 
summon something big, I want to banish it. Dynamiscus banishes it. Good right there. And Infinite Impermanence just being a really, really strong card in the fact that it just negates the entire column and in a monster's effect, and it's a hand trap to boot. So, guys, that is... All the cards in Dual Overload that I'm hoping to pull, hopefully we will pull them, hopefully we're going to get these cards, and now that we've gone through the list of cards that I would want to pull and giving you kind of an explanation to why we bought the Dual Overload packs, let's go ahead and switch over to the table cam so we can go ahead and open these packs for you guys. Alright guys, so here we are on the table cam, let's go ahead and crack into our Dual Overload everything we could potentially want is in this set and it's gonna be really cool if we pull anything like needle fiber union carrier vanities ruler any of these cards would really boost any of our strategies and really make me have to choose which strategy we're going to be playing this weekend well this next week in the sealed only league because this is the last episode before the tournament comes out now obviously you can tell the box is already ripped a bit so let's just go ahead and rip it some more opening it up and seeing what we can get oh i forgot we actually get a giant card in this as well i actually forgot about this um what is our giant card it is tour guide from the underworld i actually already have one of these it's on my wall behind here but um nice to have i guess like just an extra thing bonus there but that's not what we're here for that's not what we're here for we're here to open up these packs pull some amazing cards like infinite impermanence phantasme compulse needle fiber good blink monsters in general and hopefully we will pull what we need to improve our decks. Any of them, really. And honestly, seeing as we've got a Relinquish Anima and a Phantasme pack, let's leave those to last, because those are cards that we actually really, really want to pull. So these packs will be last, and then we'll open these packs first. So, first pack of Dual Overload. Let's see what we can pull to improve our deck. Hopefully, we'll pull something really good. Hopefully, we'll get what we need. Honestly, it all comes down to luck in the Sealed Only League, and we need to open these. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So... First card is a Link Monster and is an Ancient Gear Ballista. Not something that we personally need, but it could be useful later on, I guess, because it does take two Earth Machines, and we can technically use that in our Machine Strategy. Uh, Phantasm Emperor Trilogy, not going to be used in us. Oh, nice, we already got one Link Monster that I said that I wanted, Her Herald of Mirage Lights. Just a really, really good card for our Drytron Strategy there to get off the bat. I'm very, very happy with that, so that's already a plus on our end. Malefic Divide and What to Giraffe something we could actually technically use because attack directly inflict damage to your opponent and stop your opponent from activating card, cards or effects until the end of the net of this turn it could actually be something we use potentially not something right off the bat but hey it could be a cheeky side deck tech you never know but let's continue on though because we still need to pull those link monsters we need to pull those generic trap cards that will boost all of our strategies and we need to get into it nice extra hero infernal divisor just i'm a hero man but it's not what we need but i'm happy to get it another what giraffe dd abyss king gilgamesh mystical to space typhoon really good pull there just in general so we can go ahead and have that additional disruption and malefic selector so this is probably going to be a side deck card because we're already maining three cosmic cyclones in our decks because we got those from the machine structure deck but it's not bad to have a mystical space typhoon as extra backup as well so i'm happy to pull it i'm very happy to get it so let's open another pack we've still got four packs to go including this one let's see what we get so we got witchcrafter creation we're not playing witchcrafters but i do like the deck swap frog if we ever do build sealed only frogs i guess um magical musketeer casper all right malefic divide and secrets six samurai fuma that pack did not help us in any way shape or form but some pretty cards were pulled so not bad not bad at all next pack though let's hopefully get what we need in this pack i'm hoping to be pulling what we need though and artifact dagger another really good card if we ever get artifact side this could be really really useful so i'm going to put that in the really good pile uh, abyss actor hyper director witchcrafter madame veer another dd king gildamesh and a white mare all right so so far in the packs that we didn't put to the side we've got the herald of mirage lights mystical space typhoon and artifact dagda now i'm really hoping we can still get like a compulse a dynamiscus an impermanence a phantasma like just cards that would be generically useful along with cards like vanity's ruler because if we pull one vanity's ruler that will increase our drytron strategy to a whole new level so that would be really nice so madolce magellan ojama emperor malefic paradox gear nice we got we got it we got vanity's roll up that's really really good for plan a our drytron strategy so that's really really nice right there and malefic territory so so far we've pulled four cards that we can potentially use in our strategy this will be the last pack of dual overload hopefully it will contain 
something really strong, like a really good extra deck monster that we can play, that we can use, and it will give us something that will be able to just break our deck entirely. Now, let's go ahead and flip the cards, see what it is. So our first link monster in this pack is Amarilla the Star, the Star Leader Dragon. Okay, interesting. We also got the Hollow Giants, Magic Formula, Celestial, and our oh, Cards of Fate. So the last pack sadly did not hold anything amazing for us. We didn't pull a lot of the things that we wanted. We pulled, we didn't pull the Parshaft, we didn't pull Neofiber, Selene, Compulse, um, Impermanence. We didn't pull any generic cards, but overall we did actually get some really useful cards for some of our other strategies we got dagda for a potential future plays we got vanity's ruler which is just going to increase the drytron strategy even more because having this over christia is just insane because now we can special summon and our opponent can't special summon and we got herald of Mirage, mirage lights for future things as well just so we can go ahead and stop our opponent from playing like hell i could even put this in now and say because we don't need the link monsters we could go ahead and just make this and pretty much say we can go make this send fairies to graveyard our opponent activates spells and traps have the negation there which would actually be pretty decent and a potential strategy for our current deck of drytron but anyway guys that has been the dual overload opening section let's go ahead and go into the deck profile section of the video to show you what we could be playing for the sealed only league next week so what is the deck that we're going to be showcasing in today's sealed only league now throughout the month i've shown you multiple different decks being counter fairy drytron potentially peaking a bit of a live twin deck but the deck that we're going to be showcasing today is going to be the deck that i'm most likely going to take into this month's sealed only league and that deck is the machina deck that we have right here now I was been constantly thinking throughout the month after we opened the Genesis Impact box, what am I going to be opening? What am I going to be playing? And how can I improve the decks that I already have? And what I've decided to do is to most likely play the Machina strategy this month in the Sealed Only League for a couple of reasons. First reason being, this deck has a really good edge against a lot of the decks in the format. Going, Seeing as we're playing against a lot of decks that are very monster based and very monster reliant, we're going to have a really good card in the form of Machina Citadel being just a Raigeki on the board every time and being able to clear all of our opponent's monsters, which is really, really nice. And also because this deck doesn't really lose to back row such as like our counter fairy does. And the reason I'm stating this specifically is because, well, let's face it, everybody known in the sealed only league at this point will know that i play have counter fairy and seeing as they know i have counter fairy and they'll probably maybe change a few things because i might be playing the machina strategy they're all going to be playing cards like cosmic cyclone twin twister mystical face Sessarian, to be able to destroy my back row and i feel like seeing as that is a thing and will deal with us a big blow if we do play counter fairies i kind of chose to go back a bit not play the counter fairies this time and potentially just play the machina deck overall now i could always be a last minute and go to the drive from strategy as well guys seeing as we do now have the vanity's ruler and vanity's ruler just boosts the deck a lot and we've also got the herald of the mirage light because that could also just be a really big boost to us being able to incorporate all of the hand trap fairy stuff in the deck now which could be a really really strong asset to us but i'm not too sure if i do want to go down that route so the machina strategy is currently my number one into taking in this month to the sealed only league so guys now that i've kind of given you guys the reasons behind that and why i've kind of decided to open use showcase to you guys the machinist deck we're going to actually go ahead go into the deck profile and show you guys pretty much what the deck might be looking like in the sealed only league this month so let's go ahead and showcase the deck to you guys so starting off we are playing two machina citadel this card is a really really strong card for a lot of reasons one you pretty much is just a raigeki on legs that goes ahead and kills a machine monster and destroys all opponents monsters with less or equal attack to that monster and two because it can summon itself from the graveyard whenever a machine monster is destroyed an earth machine to be specific so you get to go ahead and just summon it back from the graveyard really really easy now the whole reason though why i'm only playing two and you're probably thinking if it does all that why are you only playing two is because all this card does is that it doesn't have a way to summon itself from the hand it doesn't have a way to summon itself from the deck it only has a way to summon itself from the graveyard and it relies on your opponent killing an earth machine monster you control so you really do not want to draw this card you don't want to see this in your opening hand you never want to draw this card so playing two is just the best strategy because if it somehow gets banished from the graveyard you have a second one in the deck
deck and also if you do draw it you still have one in the deck that you could potentially send to the deck to the graveyard and there are ways to get it out of your hand through a lot of the different machine of monsters in your deck but playing two is just the best ratio for the pure fact that it deals with a lot of the opponent issues that you can go ahead and deal with and two is just the best number in my personal opinion continuing on though we are playing free machine of fortress this card is really really good in the machine of deck for a couple of reasons one you can discard itself and another machine of monster to go ahead and special summon it from the hand of the graveyard as long as it equals or exceeds the levels to summon the card and two it has two really good effects one being if it's targeted by a monster effect go ahead and look at your opponent's hand and discard a card from their hand and two if it's destroyed by battle you just get to destroy a card your opponent controls really really strong really really nice and it's just a really good card overall for us in this deck Continuing on though, we also play three Machina Air Raider because this card basically says, oh, during my opponent's turn, target a Machina monster and destroy it, then special summon a Machina monster from the deck who has an equal or less level to that Machina monster. Just a really good card and you can discard one card in your hand to special summon it out from your hand. So just discard a Machina monster, special summon it out, and then during your opponent's turn, you have that effect to kill itself and then summon something from the deck. Just really, really good. Makes it easier to summon Machina Citadel. Great card in general. Next, Machina Irradiate which is just another really good card in this deck as well being that it can destroy a machina card and special summon a machina monster from the graveyard to go ahead and special summon a monster with an equal or lower level if that is a machina so it's just more ways to destroy and to be honest there's a combo in the deck that i do quite often in this build where we just go ahead and summon the raider or we summon the irregulator and then we just go ahead summon this summon either of the two one from the graveyard and then we go ahead and have the combo to complete continuously summon them out so we can just keep on gaining resources through that and just keep on swapping our cards out and get Getting more ways to summon back our citadel from the graveyard which is really good uh next though we play free machina gear frame it's basically stratus from the deck when it's normal summoned it searches any machina monster or, which is really really good and just gives us access to every machina on our deck uh, free machina possessed storage this is pretty much on summon a revival from the graveyard and that's why i play it because i'm going to be summoning because if i've summoned machina gear frame and i search out and i go ahead and special summon from the deck uh the special summon from the hand the air raider then during my opponent's turn i'm just going to go ahead and kill the gear frame and special summon out storage and then summon back one of the machina monsters from the graveyard which is really good there as well so it's just like really good overall which is just nice it's just a really really good card and it does have another effect which i actually haven't read yet because i've never actually used it that says you can target one other machine monster you control and one spell and trap card your opponent controls return them to the hand so it's just like a removal on back row two not really an effect that i've ever used so it's the first time i'm actually reading it but i played two of it just because it's a revival from the graveyard which is really really nice continuing on though for the last monsters we actually play in the deck we play free scrap recycler and you guys are probably thinking scrap recycler Scrap recycle? What? <laughs> That's not a machine monster. But pretty much we play it just so we can go ahead and send the citadels to the graveyard. On summon, we send machine and citadels to the graveyard. If our opponent hasn't attacked us, hasn't killed this, we just have a monster on board still. And if our opponent does kill it, we summon the citadel from graveyard. Simple as that. It's a free up in the deck and it's really, really nice to have because of that. But those are all the monsters we're playing. Obviously, we haven't got any hand traps yet in the sealed only league, so we're not really playing any hand traps just yet. But right now, we are playing Machinas, and that is the monsters that we are playing. So go ahead, put that to the side, and let's go ahead and see what we have here in our spells and traps. So starting off for spells, we play free Machina Redeployment. This is pretty much reinforcements of the army for Machina cards. You can either discard one card to add two Machina monsters from your deck to your hand, giving you instant access into any Machina monster in your entire deck or you can discard one machina card to add two different machina cards from your deck to your hand so you either discard one card which is not a machina to add two machina monsters or you just discard one machina card and then just search two machina cards so you could add traps spells whatever you really want from the deck and it's just a really strong card in the machina deck being really good and giving us even more consistency in our deck which is really really nice um, we also do play free cosmic cyclone you know our opponents do still have super polymerization i want ways to prevent super polymerization so free cosmic cyclone helps us prevent super polymerization hence the free super hence the free cosmic cyclone in the main deck but those are all the spells though not a lot of spells because obviously we're playing more trap cards because we have had more trap cards throughout the sealed only league so starting off though for the traps we're playing free machina overdrive this card is actually really really insane for the machina strategy for the fact that you just go ahead and target a machine monster say our scrap recycler and then destroy it and then you can go ahead and special summon one monster with a different name from your deck which is really insane because you can just summon any machina monster from your deck be 
be it your overdrive being it your eradicator be it your possessed storage you could just summon any of those from the deck and then if it was an earth monster you can go ahead and trigger your citadel to summon it from the graveyard now this also has another effect though that is really really strong being that if it's in the graveyard you can go ahead and banish it and return three of your machine of monsters or cards like it's, i believe it's just machine of monsters yeah machine of monsters to the deck and which are banished on your graveyard and then just draw one card so not only does it give us a bit of consistency but it also gives us the ability to return our banished machine of monsters to the deck which is really good because if our opponent ends up banishing them we're going to need ways to put them back and this is just a way to put them back which is really nice for us we also do play though two bottomless trap hole shadows are a deck this card says i hate every shadow in the game so we're playing two bottomless trap hole to deal with our opponent's shadow monsters two back to front is just a it's just too, really just a revival card it revives any of our monsters from the graveyard it can revive citadel so we can go ahead and write geki it, it's a good card and it gives us a lot of revivability which is nice and we also play three solemn warning three solemn strike and two solemn judgment of course i'm playing the solemn package let's be honest guys solemns in this format are going to be so strong for the fact that if i solemn warning under my opponent they're not going to be able to summon anything they're going to be negated they activate the super polymerization done well they activate their shadow fusion they're done shadow l shadow fusion done they attempt to summon from the hand done it's just a really good card if we activate some strike it basically says oh you used a monster effect gone inherent summon gone it's really good and then solemn judgment is just a big fat no button whenever i want it and it's really really nice so of course we're going to be playing the solemn package it's going to be useful and it's probably going to help us a lot even if our opponent does play a lot of back row removal so yeah loads of back row removal for us le uh, loads of uh, prevention in our deck for us so that's the main deck though obviously i've built this the best i could seeing as we don't have a huge amount of different cards that we can really work with we've just got a lot of uh, genesis impact right now the counter fairy structure deck the machine structure deck and what we just got from dual overload so it's not a huge change but in nonetheless these are really good cards in this deck so far and i feel like the deck is really strong and going to be ready for month two but month three will hopefully give us a lot more to play with so yeah but going into the extra deck now obviously we don't have a lot of extra cards but we have what we have so starting off we play one <laughs> Aramilia the star leader dragon this is pretty much just so we can go ahead and special summon a second citadel from our hand because what this does is it cannot be used as link material you can target one face up monster this card points to special summon one monster with the same original level from your hand to the zone this card points to in defense position but negate its effects so pretty much the whole reason behind this is if i do draw one of my citadels and i have citadel in the graveyard and i summon citadel and i have two monsters i can go ahead and make this and just summon the second citadel from my hand so it's it's just a cheeky tech there that could potentially happen that i pulled from dual overload and i was like okay that could that could potentially happen so we're going to play it one ancient gear ballista now I said this in the opening, but this is actually pretty useful for our machine of strategy for a couple of reasons. One, this card takes two Earth Machine Monsters to make, just right off the bat. Two, its first effect is irrelevant though, because it only adds a, an Ancient Gear Monster or an Ancient Gear spell, I believe, and or a Gear Town from the deck to your hand. So that, that's pretty much irrelevant to us. But why I'm playing it in this deck is for its second effect, which basically does, you can target one spell or trap card you control and one monster your opponent controls. Destroy the spell and trap card and make the opponent's monster have zero attack points now the whole reasoning behind playing this in my opinion is because well i just go ahead and summon a ton of big monsters i go ahead and link them away to make the ancient gear ballista well i have a bad spell or trap card set i go ahead and pop it make the opponent's monster zero gives me access into otk that's the reasoning behind this card and i saw it i read it and i instantly thought hey that is great that is a good card to play that will be very useful at times and it will definitely give us more ways to kind of play around our opponent give us more accessibility to winning and just make our lives a lot easier so i felt like it was a really good card to actually pull for the machine strategy and will definitely help us throughout the sealed only league i believe but continuing on we obviously play the free nightmare phoenix the free nightmare unicorn and the free nightmare griffin this hasn't changed it, it's not going to change until i get better extra deck monsters so yeah we're playing free 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 and that's pretty much it that is literally the whole main deck and extra deck we do have a side deck as well somewhat of one that i can show you guys as well which i might as well show you but it's not going to be the best we play free trap trick because well and they're not sleeves because i don't have enough sleeves to sleeve 
everything, and these are the only cards that aren't sleeved. Um, we play the free G Zakiru, which I should have probably shown first, but we play these because they're Kaijus, we can just go ahead and get rid of opponent's monsters, and seeing as they're free, free, we can go ahead and get over them with Citadel's effect, so it's fine if we give our opponent that. Uh, an additional MST, because I felt like having more back row removal in the side deck would give us that boost to be able to get rid of our opponent's stuff, so that's really nice. Free Dark Bribe, because, well, Dark Bribe is just a good spell and trap disruption, and if our opponent does play, like, Shadows or something, and I feel like I need to put these in over something like the Slum Warnings, or maybe the cosmic cyclones or something like that and i can put these in and then finally we're playing free recall as well because monster effects very prevalent if our opponent's playing more of a monster effect based deck and i want to take out like the solemn warnings as i said or something along those lines i can switch them in for the recalls just so i can have that ability to negate their monster effects there as well but that is pretty much the side like it's not the best i need to get more cards for it obviously like it needs to be changed it needs to be updated dual devastator might be the next unlock i'm not too sure it's either going to be that or maximum gold at the current moment but yeah that is the uh deck profile though honestly this is the deck that i will probably take into the sealed only league it's the most likely chance i am debating still between this and drytron because obviously we did get vanity's ruler and we also did get the herald of mirage light which is just really really good but i feel like this deck overall will just be stronger for the sealed only league so it's the most the deck that is currently at the top of my list for potentially playing in the sealed only league but anyway guys that is the deck profile portion of the video let's go ahead and swap over to edio pro so you guys can see uh, some dual videos with this deck that was the deck profile here it is on the screen right now to just show you this is the list that we're going to be taking onto edio pro to have a quick game with see if it will work see if it will be good and without further ado though guys let's actually go into a game find one have some fun with it hopefully win it because obviously we're playing a sealed only deck i'm not a hundred percent certain if we'll win but hey if we win we win if we lose we lose but honestly guys i just want to play this deck because it's a really fun deck it's a really good deck and it is a great plan c to have for this sealed only league seeing as the ritual spell is not necessarily the easiest thing to pull now Looking at the first hand though that we've got here, this hand is actually really, really insane. But it just depends on what our opponent is playing because I have a board that can literally go Raigeki, I can send cards to the graveyard, I can get monsters on the board, and it looks like we're up against a synchro strategy. Not good for us. Hopefully though, we'll be able to play through this synchro strategy, we'll be able to not really care about it. It seems he's just adding a lot of junk synchrons right now though. What is he doing? What is he doing? Um, so he's going to normally summon a Junk Synchron. Junk Synchron's going to summon the Plant Synchron. The Fluid Air Synchron from the Graveyard. Then he's going to activate his Doppel Warrior. So we're probably going to see him making a Crystal... No, not a Crystal Wing. He'll probably end up making like a Shooting Quasar Dragon or a Cosmic Blazer. Goes ahead and summons Junk Speeder. Alright. So pretty fun deck that we're looking at right here. We're looking at Synchrons, essentially. Summons out two Doppel Tokens and is then going to summon two Synchron Monsters from the deck due to the effect of the Junk Speeder. What will he summon, I wonder? So he's going to summon a Steam Synchron and a Satellite Synchron. Okay, currently he's got this which will allow him to Synchro Summon during his opponent's turn. And he's also got Satellite Warrior. This seems he's going to go ahead and Synchro Summon the Fleury Synchron and the Token with the Junk Synchron to make a level 8 Synchro Monster though. And he makes a Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. Interesting choice. So could he be playing a Red Dragon Archfiend deck then? Instead of playing a Stardust deck? Which would be kind of contradictory for, you know, um, a Synchron deck. Seeing as the Synchrons go with Yusei, which is Stardust in that. And then Jack Atlas has the Resonators, which go with the Red Dragon Archfiend stuff. So that's actually kind of interesting. He makes a Mathmex Sigma. A Mathmex Final Sigma. Okay. Interesting choice. Um, I want to, I'm not sure where this is going. So he summons Sigma and passes. And we've opened a double city. Oh my god, okay. Interesting. I want to say the least. So, I'm going to start off by normal summoning our Machina, Citadel, our Machina Gear Frame, which is going to go ahead and allow us to add a Machina from our deck to our hand. The Machina we're going to add is our Machina Irregulator. And then we're going to go ahead and activate our Machina Air Raider, sending the Citadel to the graveyard and summoning the air raider from our hand. We're then going to go ahead and use the irregulator, so we're going to send the citadel to the graveyard and summon the irregulator to, from the grave from the field's hand. And our opponent just surrenders, okay, cool. Um, so obviously <laughs> our opponent just surrendered. What we're pretty much going to do 
was we were going to summon the Machine of Citadel by destroying our gear frame, or we were going to destroy our radar. We are just going to kill one of our things, pretty much. Or hell, even just attack into the final Sigma with our gear frame. But I don't think I was actually able to summon anything from the graveyard, because I didn't have a Machina to send to the graveyard. But pretty much, I would have probably just ended up attacking with the gear frame, summoning the Citadel from the graveyard, attacked over the final Sigma, have the Air Raider attack the Satellite Synchron, and then pretty much just have the Raigeki for the following turn, which isn't bad and pretty good for us. So, not bad game. Honestly, our opponent just chose to surrender, but seeing as that was the case, we're going to actually have one more. Because, honestly, if our opponent just surrenders and we haven't really done anything, there's not really a point to have that game in the video. So, just to keep that in, we're going to have another game, and we're going to see what's going to happen. So, Scissors versus Rock, we'll be going first. So we drew, oh, oh no, um, hmm, this is not the best of hands, but it will do. So what we're going to do is we're going to summon our possessed storage, and then we're going to set three cards, and we're going to pass turn. Now, we do have access to the Raigeki thanks to our Machina Overdrive, so that's really good. We have a formless trap hole to stop anything he could potentially summon that would be an issue, and he starts off with a terraforming. Okay, so the terraforming is fine. What's he going to add from deck to hand? He's going to add a... Oh! Oh, perfect! We're up against Invoked! That's... That's fun, right? Alright. <laughs> oh, this, this isn't fun. So he goes ahead and summon, activates Magical Meltdown. And I can't even activate Bottomless Trap Hole now. Because you can't chain to the summon of a Fusion Monster with Magical Meltdown on the field. So that's, that's just great. So he summons Alice to the Invoker. That's fine. I can't deal with that. Gets Magical Meltdown, absolutely fine by me. I don't want to put the Zest Storage into the graveyard just yet, because he could use it. And he goes ahead and summons the Almirage, that's also fine by me. I have no issues there. He's probably going to turn the Alvar yep into a Secure Gardener. So this is pretty much just one card Mechaba at this point. And I assume he's just going to continue on, make the Mechaba. Don't really see him doing anything else. So he activates the, he activates the Invocation now. Maybe he's making a Purgatorio instead? That'd be interesting. No, he's going to make the mecha, but what am I saying? He's got the Secure Gardener on board. So yeah, he banishes the Alistair and the Secure Gardener, makes the mecha, And then he uses the Invocation to put the Alistair back into his hand. Standard Invocate, each Invoke player plays. It's what the deck does. And he activates a Sad... Oh, great. Great. We're playing against Spool Power Shadow... Uh, sorry, Invoked Dogmatica with our Machina deck. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, this is a casual. This is the casual server as well. I haven't even like I'm not even touching the competitive server until we've got way more cards. But oh my god, this is this does not look good for me at all. So he goes ahead and adds Ecclesia. All right, and then he's going to go ahead and use the App Clone effect to go ahead and sh most likely add Schism. Yeah, and then he's going to discard another card, or he could discard the Schism because he could just go ahead and summon that here. No, he's going to discard another Nadir, but he could have summoned Maximus and then sent two Shadows to the graveyard and or Ints as well. So he's going to go ahead and now summon the Ecclesia. It, this is literally just what Dogmatica Invokes does, um, or Invoke Dogmatica does, because it's it's the basic plays. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking. This is, I play this deck, I have this deck, it's what the deck does. I, I have n nothing to really say. It's a standard Invoked Dogmatica. So he goes ahead and grabs a Maximus now. That's what I'm going to bottomless trap for if he summons. Yeah, okay, cool. So he's going to banish the Almirage from the graveyard. He goes ahead and summons that out. I'm going to go ahead and instantly form this trap hole. That, that thing's not resolving. <laughs> that, that, thing, that thing's not allowed to resolve. So we're going to go ahead and activate the bottomless trap hole. Getting rid of that. If he has a trap in hand with his mecha bar, crap. <laughs> not good for me. But if not, it's fine as well. So we'll go ahead and see what he does. Uh, so he goes ahead and uses... He does have a trap. So he's going to discard the Schism to protect his Maximus. Which, honestly, at this point, I think I can do this. So we're going to go ahead and use the Operate Overdrive, which is going to kill our Possessed Storage. Honestly, it's going to leave us with just the... Well, we'll have a play left, but it's not going to be the best. So we're going to go ahead and use the Possessed Storage. We're going to use the Machina Overdrive to kill the Possessed Storage. Hopefully he doesn't have, like, an Ash Blossom. Because if he has an Ash Blossom, then I can't do what I want to do. And if I can't do what I want to do, he's going to win. <laughs> and I want to at least try to stop him. Okay, so it resolves. That's good. And we're going to go ahead and summon the Machina Citadel that's in our deck. Okay. 
And now in the open game state, we're going to write Geki is born. <laughs> Good. Now, all I need to do... Re no, I don't even need to draw a monster, to be honest, because we've got back to her front lines. So we can just go ahead and reset up this board really easily. So this is really good for me. All right, so now we wipe his board. And then in the end phase, we're going to go ahead and use back to front. All right, so he has four cards left in hand. I know one of them's the Alistar, and he uses Crawled by the Grave. His target is Citadel. I'm just going to have to instantly use the back to front to revive that Citadel because I don't want the Citadel being banished. And that's all we have, really. We don't have any other cards. We've still got the right Geki, which is nice, but I'm not in the best position now. I could have had more monsters if we did that. And we drew a Solemn Strike. That's going to be good to stop the invocation. So we're going to go ahead and swap our lovely Citadel here to attack mode. We're going to set our Solemn Strike. We're going to go into the battle phase, of course, and we're just going to attack for 3,000 points of damage. So not bad. We actually were able to play through the Dogmatica Invoked player's board. That's actually really good. And he's already wasted two Nadirs, so he's not able to recycle that Nadir in the graveyard, unless he has a third Nadir. He's got the... He's got three cards that are currently unknown to me, and I feel like I'm in a pretty good position, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantly Solemn Strike the Alistair. And now he's got two Alistairs. Don't care if he's got another Alistair, because he can only summon one per turn. And we've got the Citadel to be able to deal 3k damage. Like, legit, all we need to do to actually break our board right now is just draw any Machina monster that we can summon. So he summons the Alistair. Now, the only way this is bad is if he has an Invocation in hand. If he has an Invocation in hand, this sucks for us. If he doesn't, we good. Okay, so it seems he didn't, so he passed his turn. Now, let's draw a card that we can use. Solemn Warning, that will deal with the next Alistar. I'm fine with that. So, we should technically have game now. Because we're just going to attack for 3k. He's going to attempt to summon his Alistar on the following turn. And we're going to Solemn Warning his Alistar summon. So, somehow, we're winning against Invoked Dogmatica. I don't know how. Don't, don't ask me how. But, yeah. Cool. But... <laughs> That seems to be the case. We're going to set one. We're going to pass. It's his turn. He's going to attempt to summon the Alistar. Again, as long as he doesn't have the invocation, we are absolutely fine. And he will not be able to win. So we go ahead and activate the Soul Warning. If he doesn't have invocation, we win. If he doesn't have it, we win the game. He activates a Magical Meltdown. Okay, man had all three Meltdowns. That's kind of hilarious. Or he drew one for turn. But he goes ahead and adds an Alistar to hand. He has one more Alistar. Two unknown cards in hand. Don't be a Meltdown and we win. Cool. Um, don't be an invocation, sorry, and we win. So he goes ahead and sets one. He passes turn. We draw for turn. It's a cosmic cyclone. So just off the bat, I'm a cosmic that's set. Because I don't trust that set. And it was a solemn strike. We're going to go into the battle phase now. And we win. And I'm going to give. The and he just surrendered. Like, that was a game. That was a game that we just. I can't believe that we actually won that. Like, that was invoked Dogmatica. He had everything they could potentially need to actually play the game. He had an idea and Anissa. Those are pretty much normally game-changing cards and make us lose. But luckily, we were able to get rid of the Mechaba. We were able to wipe his board. We were able to ride Geki with the Citadel. And we were able to come out on top in the end. But, guys, that has been the duel portion of this video. This has been a good duel. Let's go to the last bits of the video. So, guys, that is the end. We have done a duel video, we have talked about the set we unlocked, we have done a deck profile, and we've even opened Duel Overload to show you guys what we could potentially be opening. Now, this video has been a lot of fun, this one especially, seeing as we were able to defeat Dogmatica Invoked with technically free stretch decks and a couple of extra cards, a top meta contending deck in the format with pretty much just Machina, and... Being able to do that is really insane, and I hope you really did enjoy that duel. But, guys, that has been the video. Please don't forget, guys, that I need your support to be able to get more unlocks on the channel, be able to unlock more products. So, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, because if you doing that will help me unlock more products, such as Maximum Gold, Mega Tins, like Dual Sets, Dual Devastator, all sorts of different sets to help us either build our Drytron strategy. Maybe I'll put on more Machina strategies, because the Machina deck does seem to be really, really strong. But, guys, 
don't forget to like comment and subscribe this has been a really fun video this is the last video before i have got to go into the tournament against all the other yugi tubers again in the sealed only league and if you guys maybe have a thought of which deck i should potentially play be it the counter fairy deck be it the drytron deck seeing as that deck has actually got a lot more powerful just from us pulling herald of mirage light and vanity's ruler maybe we should play that um tell me what you think we should play in the comment section below but guys please don't forget to like comment and subscribe as i said check out the videos later on in the in the sealed only league check out all the links in the description as well and please check out the other sealed only videos as well and like those just so i can get those unlocks like i said but guys thanks so much for watching check out all the links to the other youtubers in the league as well and i'll see you guys in the next one still can't believe we managed to beat dogmatic and vote <laughs>